Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Clams Casino Stuff Pasta Shells. That's right, we are stuffing pasta shells with things that grew up in actual shells in a recipe inspired by my favorite fancy childhood appetizer. And if you haven't had them, Clams Casino basically are clams broiled with buttery breadcrumbs and bacon. And that is one of my earliest and most beloved taste memories. And with this very successful experiment, I've turned it into a new beloved taste memory. And to get started, the first thing we'll do is transfer about three cups or so of bread cubes, fairly small bread cubes, that I cut from a loaf of stale wheat sourdough bread. And what we'll do is spread that out on a foil lined baking sheet, and we will pop that in a 350 degree oven for about 20 to 30 minutes, or until they're pretty much completely dried out. And what we'll do once that comes out of the oven is transfer that into a bowl, and we will let it cool down to room temp. Oh, and if you want to save a step and use one of those packaged dry bread cubes that you use for stuffing recipes, that would work here. But be careful, sometimes those come seasoned. And for this, I think we want plain bread cubes. But anyway, once our bread cubes are set, we can move on to cook some bacon in a dry pan, which we will do over between medium and medium high heat. And as you can see, those have been cut into about half inch strips, maybe a little bit smaller. What's that, three eighths? And as usual, we want to cook this until pretty much all the fat renders out and our bacon's fairly crisp. And as you probably know, there's a great visual clue for when you're getting close. And that is the bacon starts to look foamy. Because as we like to say, when your bacon looks foamy, it's almost done homey. Since that means the fat is pretty much rendered out. And once our bacon does finally look like this, what I like to do is turn off the heat and grab a couple paper towels wadded up and a pair of tongs and we will use that to absorb most of the rendered fat in the pan. Okay, we're not gonna get all of it, but we don't need to. We're just gonna get out a good amount and then safely transfer that into a bowl and discard it appropriately. And yes, of course you could save that bacon fat and use it to cook other things, but I'm sorry I didn't this time. And then once our pan's been degreased, we'll turn it back on to medium high heat and we will toss in a diced onion, as well as some diced red and green peppers which can really be any kind of pepper you want, sweet, hot, or in between. And what we'll do is cook that stirring for a couple minutes, or until those onions and peppers just start to barely soften up. All right, all this is gonna get baked in the shells, so we don't wanna cook things too soft at this point. And then what we'll do after a couple minutes is stop and toss in a couple cloves of minced garlic, and we will cook that stirring for another minute or so, at which point we'll introduce the star of the show, which are a couple cans of chopped clams, but at this point, we only want the juice. So what we'll do is dump our cans into this strainer so we can catch the actual clams and let that juice run through. And we'll reserve those clams to use in a few minutes. But for now, all we'll do is stir in that clam juice and then we'll let this cook for, I don't know, three or four minutes, maybe five, until almost all, but not all, of the liquid evaporates. And what we're shooting for, no matter how long it takes, is to get this to the point where if we scrape the bottom of the pan with our spatula, we can see the bottom for two or three seconds before that liquid fills back in. Okay, you see that? That is exactly where we want to be. And once we do get to that point, we'll pull that off the heat and we will transfer that mixture over our dry bread cubes, which for a dry cube of bread has to be pretty exciting. And then we'll also go ahead and dump in our reserved clams, at which point we'll give everything a quick mix before we add the rest of the ingredients which we could, I guess, just add now and mix this once. But I feel like if we mix it now, all those bread cubes will get a little more even coating of that wet mixture and maybe hydrate a little more uniformly. But anyway, once that's tossed, we can go ahead and add some kosher salt as well as some freshly ground black pepper. And then believe it or not, a few shakes of cayenne. And once we have that seasoned to our liking, we'll go ahead and add some freshly chopped parsley followed by the two cheeses we're gonna use. Okay, a little bit of ricotta to kind of bind this all together. And then last but not least, some finely and freshly grated Parmesan. Oh yeah, the real stuff, Parmigiano Reggiano. And I know it does look a little bit different because I didn't use the microplane. I used the smallest holes on my box grater for a slightly larger grate, which I thought worked great. And that's it, we'll take a spoon and give this a thorough mixing. And we could, if we want, use this right away but I'm gonna go ahead and cover it and pop it in the fridge for about a half hour while we prep the rest of the components. The first of which would be the world's easiest white sauce, which is made by whisking two tablespoons of flour 
into a couple tablespoons of melted butter, set over medium high heat. And once that's all whisked together nice and smooth, we will cook this stirring for a couple minutes, just to toast that flour a little bit, and create what we call in the business a roux, R-O-U-X. But we are not going to go too far. Okay, we don't want our flour to brown. We just want it to turn a beautiful shade of tan, which will only take a couple minutes, and hopefully looks like this. And once that happens, we will carefully and quickly add three cups of cold milk. Just dump it in all at once and start whisking. And you're probably thinking, if we dump it all in like that, we're probably going to get lots of lumps. Okay, shouldn't we just gradually whisk it in? Well, no. Totally unnecessary. All right, there's an old saying, hot roux, cold milk, no lumps. And once we have that whisk smooth, we go ahead and season it up with a little bit of salt, plus a few shakes of cayenne. And then to finish this, all we need to do is wait for it to come to a simmer, stirring very often. And once our mixture does start to simmer, we are basically done. And now that my mixture is simmering, let me go ahead and grab a ladle and give you a look. And as you'll see, we have zero lumps. And also, please note, this sauce is not very thick at all, which is kind of key since we're going to bake this, and it cannot be too thick at this point. And that's it. As soon as our extremely simple white sauce has simmered, we'll pull that off the heat, and we will transfer about three quarters of it into this baking dish, which is a fairly standard 9 by 12 casserole. And then the other 25% of the sauce, we will save to ladle over the top of our stuffed shells, which is our next step. And while you were making your sauce, or maybe while you were doing your bread cubes, we'll want to go ahead and cook some jumbo pasta shells and salted water, of course, for about nine minutes or so. Okay, it takes 12 minutes to get them tender, but when you're going to stuff them and bake them, we do want to undercook them a little bit. So I cook these exactly nine minutes before pulling them off the heat and draining them, and then reserving them in just enough cold water to cover, which will prevent them from drying out and sticking together. And that's it. Once our components are done, we can pull out our clams casino filling and we can take a spoon and we can start stuffing these shells. And by stuffing, I mean slightly overstuffing. Okay, so we'll fill these up, making sure that first spoon of stuffing is nicely tucked in and all the way into the nooks and crannies before topping that off with a little more. And that's it. We'll go ahead and place that over our white sauce. And because we're overstuffing these and because they're shaped like they're shaped, they're almost impossible to get to lay flat but that is not a problem. Okay, because these are tipped up a little bit, we are actually going to be able to fit more in the pan, which is going to allow me to do five rows of four. Oh, and in case you're wondering, the reason I didn't really flavor the white sauce too much and kept it pretty neutral is because this Clams Casino filling is such a flavor bomb that the white sauce underneath is going to absorb all those amazing flavors. And by the time we're finished and eating, it's going to be absolutely perfectly seasoned and delicious. But having said that, of course, feel free to tweak this any way you want. I mean, you are after all the Alexander Graham Bell of how to do this stuffed pasta shell. But since I invented it, maybe do it this way the first time. And then after tasting it, decide about any future changes. And that's it. Once we have our stuffed shells placed in, we will ladle the rest of our white sauce over the top. And then before these get baked, we will do one more grating of Parmesan over the top. All right, a fairly generous grating but not too, too much, All right? We don't want a solid, hard, crusty layer of cheese hiding our shells. So be generous, but thoughtful. And that's it. We are now ready to transfer that into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 30 to 40 minutes or until our pasta is nice and tender and the top is beautifully browned. And it hopefully looks like this. And since it is so beautiful, feel free to serve this as is. But since I have to take some contractually obligated pictures, I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some freshly chopped Italian parsley over the top. And that's it. My Clams Casino Stuffed Pasta Shells experiment was ready to enjoy. So I grabbed a spoon and tried to eat one right out of the baking dish, which turned out to be a little harder than I thought. So I'm going to go ahead and plate some up and eat them with a fork in a minute. But this looked and smelled so good, I couldn't resist. And even though it was kind of a struggle, I'm glad I did. Because it really was absolutely incredible. All right, this really did taste like Clams Casino. So if you do enjoy that, or linguine and white clam sauce, or clam and bacon pizza, or any kind of seafood stuffed pasta shell, I think you are really going to enjoy this. So I could not have loved that anymore. But it was really hard to eat, so I transferred three onto a plate and spooned over some of that now perfectly thickened white sauce. 
And that's it. Once I sauced, I went ahead and sprinkled some cayenne over the lemon wedge so that it looks not like just a plain lemon wedge. And I finished up with a little more freshly chopped Italian parsley. And I grabbed a fork and dug in, which was a significantly easier way to eat these. And it tasted just as extraordinary as the bites in the pan. But hold on a second. I really do think these are much better with a little bit of fresh lemon squeezed over the top. Just like actual Clams Casino is better with lemon. But just the juice. We don't want the seeds. Which I managed to get two of on the plate. And I did remove the one I saw. Oh, and by the way, I'm not sure who invented serving clams with bacon. All right, if I had to take a guess, I would say the Spanish. All right, maybe the French. Or maybe it was in between. And it was invented in Basque Country. But whoever did first pair bacon with clams, I would like to thank them because it really is brilliant. I mean, on paper, it really does kind of look and sound a little strange. But on the end of a fork or a spoon, it does not seem strange at all. So if by some chance you've never had clams and bacon in the same recipe, I cannot think of a better dish to try this combo. But whether that's your reason, or like me, you absolutely love Clams Casino, and you'd like to enjoy that flavor profile in a stuffed pasta shell, Either way, for a first attempt, I thought this came out amazingly well, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.